G'day folks, welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. I'm Rod Moore from Moore Art School and of course Learn to Paint TV. This week we've got a great little episode for you. We're going to paint the front beach at Lawn, which is on the Great Ocean Road in Victoria. One of my favourite little spots there and um, I've done this painting and versions of it a number of times over the years and it's a subject that I always come back to. So this is the painting here itself. As you can see, it's a simple little scene. It captures the headland. It's got some beautiful rolling waves, people playing in the water. It's a great example of how to do a basic little seascape painting and uh, just follow the steps and work through it with me. And at the end of it, you too will be able to produce a beautiful version of lawn front beach. So let's get busy painting and okay. have some fun. Let's have a look at our project for this week. We're going to do, uh, this is lawn down on the Great Ocean Road in Victoria. It's the front beach in Lawn. And uh, you've got this nice little headland here. There's an old hotel out in the corner and this jetty pier that runs through there. And it's a beautiful day, as you can see, some gentle rolling waves coming in and a few people enjoying the water and a little bit of sand. I like those reflections of these people in here. Okay, so step one of the more method of painting is we're gonna get our drawing in. Gonna use a little flat brush here to medium size. Got ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And we are going to start out just with a little touch of water just to loosen that paint up. And I'll just make a little puddle of paint there. Okay, so keep it keep this paint fairly loose when you're doing your drawing um, with a little bit of water in it. Now, I think compositionally we want the horizon line to run somewhere around about a th just higher than a third, I'd say, or around about a third. I'll run that right through. The headland itself is going to sit more there, just underneath that horizon. So the horizon's a little bit, um, a little bit higher out behind the headland. Okay, and it just sort of gently rises up like so. A lot of treetops and so on. So I'll make that a nice, pleasant one there. There's a couple of old pine trees sitting at that end. A little bit of work there, and then we're going to have our jetty will run through here. Okay, now I actually brought that out quite a bit further than what's in the photo, so I'm kind of eliminating the end part of the photo, and we're going to run our jetty out to around about there, uh, which is you know fairly different from what's in the photo, uh, but that's okay. It's all about arranging the composition to suit our needs, and we'll run that sand up to about there, which means all of this is water. And we're going to want a, a main, fairly gentle sort of wave running through there. Okay, let's start step two, our blocking. Uh, step two of the Moore method. I've got my ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, yellow ochre, and titanium white. And I think we'll start off with just blocking in our headland here. That's our dark in, in the painting. So it makes sense that we just start with that. So we'll get, this, this brush is fairly dried out and it's gone a bit crusty. Uh, but for the purposes of what we're looking for here, I think it will be fine. Um, we'll just get some paint on there. The hairs aren't really bending that much, but look, it doesn't really matter. Those old brushes can still work for you. So don't throw them out. <laughs> you always find a, a use for brushes, even if they're dried out and gone a bit gunky like so. Um, you can use them for just simple things. Now I'm mixing up the, the temperature in there. I've got blue and reds coming through um, just to create a little bit of variety. Don't make it too much the same way. And look at the edges along there. Right? They're, they're not a, it's not a solid line. It's broken up little treetops and so on. We've got the pine trees in through there. Okay, so a little bit of randomness in there, I think, is important. Now, there's a, a rocky face that comes through here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go a little bit warmer. Okay, I'll just put some of that in there for the rocks. Um, and there's grassy embankment that runs through part of there as well. So I'll just use a little bit of red for that. And then I'll go a little bit cooler and we'll just block in the rest of it there. Just a little touch here and there. Let's mix that up and see what we've got. Okay, that's a bit too strong, so a bit more white. Okay, and that's getting 
Get in close, let's just block in. Now remember, this is blocking in. We're not here to refine these shapes at this stage. We're um, just wanting to block in. And notice I've got lots and lots of paint. That's a, the key thing here with acrylics. Lots and lots of paint. I'll take a little bit of that dark, I'll pop it in the corner, and we'll just, you know, over in this side here, we'll just darken that off a little. And uh, maybe too much, so I'll work back over that a little. Just, just to create some shifts in tone. Keep it interesting, okay? So that's good. So we've got one big shape, we've got two big shapes. Now we need to get our water in, which will be our third big shape, and then our fourth big shape will be the sky. So for the water, I'm not gonna use this same brush. I mean, you could clean that out and, and so on. What I find easier is just to have a few of these, right? Um, these are cheap brushes to buy, and you can see I don't really look after them, because probably because they are so cheap to buy. Um, so get yourself two or three, and then I can just take that one, pop it in the water so it doesn't dry out, and um, move on to this big one. And I can get my blues, my cooler colors now in with this one, okay? So we'll take our blue, we'll take a little bit of the white. We don't want that to be pure blue. I've just a little tiniest little bit of the yellow ochre in there so that it's not too saturated the color. A little touch of that dark there. Okay, and we'll just run that along the horizon. Now, a lot of artists will use masking tape to get their water horizon. And I don't particularly like it. I think it makes too harsh an edge. Just practice running the brush along like that. And when you're doing seascapes, as long as it's fairly um, horizontal, then that's really what matters. If the line's a bit broken, it, that's actually a good thing. You can then create a little bit of atmosphere and, and depth in the painting because um, it will, uh, you know, having a, a softer edge or a, a lost edge, it'll add a little bit more interest to the painting. A hard edge will pull the eye right out to the back there. Okay, But what we need to do now is we need to get a fairly strong and dark green. Okay, so lot, lots of blue and yellow ochre there. Make it a little bit more on the blue side. Okay, and we need to run in just through here, our white main wave. Through that way. Now I've mucked it up through there, that's okay. Let me take a smaller brush. Okay. Something like that. And then I'll just tone that back a little bit underneath. So. Right, stand up and have a look. Okay. We'll take a big chunk of the blue. Take a big chunk of the white. We'll put those two together. And what will happen is we get a nice sky tone. So that's fairly dark. I'll add a little bit more white into that. Okay. Now look how much paint I've got there. Okay, this is important because what I want to do is just then move that brush around. Okay, this is, so this is our darkest version of the sky tone. So it's going to mostly be along the top there. Fairly random sort of movements. Notice how quickly I paint that in. Okay, now I'm going to take more white, mix it to the edge, like so, okay, and I'm going to just integrate that. Now, because I've got lots of paint, I can work back into that paint. It's not going to dry off for a few minutes. I don't have too much time, right? I don't have too much time, but I've got some time. Get some warmth in around that horizon line. OK, 
Okay, so I've just put out my uh, primary colors, ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, yellow ochre, and some white. And let's start off, we'll get a mid-tone of trees in through here. We'll, we'll put a few highlights on there as well. Uh, but for the moment, we'll just go after a, a mid-tone. So it's gonna be our um, sort of Australian eucalypti green. We'll put a touch of white in there. Lighten it back a bit, a little pinhead of the red, because it's off in the distance a bit. Okay, and you can see that, that dirties that color up. We'll add a little bit more yellow to that. And that gives us a reasonable sort of mid-tone. Let's just test though, because everything, you, you know, whenever you mix a color, you always want to test. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume the sun's sort of coming in this general direction here, um, which will make sense. So we'll just tap in the tops of um, rows of trees. Okay, so don't try and paint every individual tree and branch and so on. That'll drive you crazy. Right, um, unless you're already crazy, then that might be okay. But just try and uh, create a you know, if you look at a hillside in the distance, you're not going to be able to make out every tree. Um, you are going to see it looking a little bit more like this, okay? So, a lot of shadows in there, and then there'll be uh the lighter parts where sunlight's catching the top of those trees. Put in some rocks and a bit of a foreshore there. Again, no detail, we're not here to paint rocks. Um, not at that distance, you know, that's a fair way off. So don't get sucked into thinking you have to put every rock and pebble in there. That would be too much. <laughs> All right. Now I've, I've mixed up one mix there and I've put that through and it's all the same tone. So what I wanted to do now is just get a bit of variety. So I'll get a little bit more yellow, a little bit more red in there. Okay. And this is going to be slightly more saturated because I'm not going to put the blue into that little mix in the middle there. I'll get a little bit more white. Okay. That's a little on the red side. So I'll take a bit, a bit more yellow. Okay, and then I'll just maybe take it on the end of the brush there and we'll just here and there, we'll drop in a few other tones. Some waves that are happening in the distance there. I'm just using the edge of that palette knife to quite good effect too, it looks, looks quite good. Okay. Could have probably dulled it back a little bit more. However, um, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll introduce, I'll touch more white into it, a little pinhead of the yellow so that it glows a little. Okay, we'll just mix that up. Could probably get a little pinhead more of the yellow. So you can see how much I'm taking there. I'll just pop that in. Because what I wanna do is get some of this white foam with a little bit of sunlight in it. Now, if I just cut that through, I've got a bead of it on the back there. And I've got to be careful, I don't want to overload my brush here, uh, my knife here, because it'll come off in chunks like it has. But you can always fix that, that's not a problem. Okay. Don't make it a solid line. We can work back into that with some wave color there. Okay, smaller wave through there. Okay, now in front of that one we've got there's another little wave that's breaking as it gets into the shore there. Bury it up, don't make it a straight line. Okay, so that's looking good. We'll also add a touch of this, maybe just a hint of it. Here and there. And we'll come back and look at that because what I'm going to do is um, put in some a few more darks in there for the waves. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, 
I'm going to just move around in a few different directions here. So just work with me. So I'm going to take my um, uh, script liner brush, which is now very bent, but that's okay. As long as it's got a tip on the end, we'll be fine. And what I want to do is get some tree trunks in and I want it to be a gray. So I'm just going to take the green and the orange. So I'm basically mixing foliage color, um, this lawn color and the orange of the um, rocks. And I'll add to that some white. So I'm going to lighten it off. Okay. I'll end up with a tone like that. I'll just warm it up. So I'll pick a little bit of that orange, just warm it up slightly. Now I don't want too much on the brush because these are going to be really very, uh, you know, very delicate little trunks here and there. Okay, if you get too much, smudge it in with your finger. We can come back and put some, uh, come back and put some foliage over the top of it. Like so. Good, good. I'll pop that back. You can see how by mixing it with the palette knife, I've got it all over the palette knife there. So I'll just pull this off. Now, you could do this just as easily with a brush, okay? But what I want to do is just take my palette knife and then just cut it so I've got um, a bead there. Now that's probably too much. I'd be inclined to put that back and, and do that again, um, but I won't. But you know, just be careful you don't end up with too much on your knife there. Now this is going to come, it's going to be parallel with the ocean horizon. Okay. And it wants to run out to about there. Now I'll take my little script brush. I'll just pull a tip of it through the dark paint there. And I will just run a little Dumps in through there. Okay, now it needs a little bit of water, uh, a little bit of that foamy water here and there. As the water comes in, it's going to push up against the bottom of that pier there, no doubt. Like so, now it's coming along quite nicely. It just needs a couple of people in here now. Um, we need to put there's a couple standing right there of a reflection into that part there. So we'll get those in. And uh, you know when you do this part, they're not you know you're not doing a portrait, <laughs> right? Um, these people are just like little marks is all they are. So keep that in mind. Um, the temptation to try and put a portrait in there is uh, very strong for a lot of people like myself included. Um, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here just to indicate. Um, so put a couple of people in there. So it's just a few little marks is what we're doing here, right? I'll put one of them into a slightly redder top. And uh, I'm going to need a couple of legs. So, and <coughs> to 
get those reflections in, just gonna drag some darks into the water like that. Okay. And I'm just going to separate them from the reflection just by putting a little bit of water splashing there. Now I do feel we need to get just slightly redder into the top of this one. Just so there's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, what else do we have? There's a couple of other people in here. There's like one person who's running. Okay. The rest of the body submerges. There's a little kid there. Um, we might have another person who's getting ready to dive under that wave. Yeah. It was a quiet day. You don't normally see it this quiet down at uh, somewhere like Lawn. I remember years ago when we um, had the TV show, uh, Plain Air Painting TV, and we went down to Lawn and we're up on the hill here filming and uh, had the cameraman there and I'm busy doing a painting and I turn around and uh, there was about 500 people there watching. I had no idea that they were all there. Um, can sign this one and I'll pop this up on uh, eBay for an auction. So if you're watching the show and you think, you know, I'd really like to see those paintings up a bit closer, that's why I put them up on eBay. Um, I'll start this as a 99 cent auction and um, you never know, you might get it for a bargain or you might have to bid a little bit more as has started happening with a few of them there. Well, there we go, folks. That's uh, Lawn Front Beach. I think it's come up pretty well. It's a nice little painting. There's our original. Okay, now obviously we've made a few adjustments and amendments and so on. Um, however, I think we've done a pretty reasonable representation of the Lawn Front Beach. Those who know the area will recognize that right away. And uh, it's turned out a good little project. Pretty simple, pretty easy to do. This is one you can definitely have a go at. And it, you know, when you follow the steps that I've gone through here and apply that, you can apply it to pretty much any, any seascape painting, right? You could pretty much go down the beach and take photos and then use the same process, the same methodology and achieve great looking little seascape paintings like this one without any problems at all. And, um, you should do that, right? <laughs> so have a go at this one because I think you'll surprise yourself and, and you'll learn the process um, of how to create really nice little paintings and uh, you, you'll enjoy it, you know? So hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you and uh, make sure you go and check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV by going to www.learntopaint.tv and go to learntopaint.academy and register for a free course where I go through all these steps uh, and the more method of painting in more detail for you um, so that you can really learn the process that we've gone through here today. Um, so check out those two sites and uh, I'll see you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.